In the wake of the financial crash of 2008 the figure for the number of appointments of LPA receivers went drastically up by 10 times, from just over 1,000 in 2007 to over 8,500 by September 2008. The authors are Matthew Ditchburn who is a senior associate in Lovell's Real Estate Disputes team and Joe Pitt is a director of Atis Real responsible for the corporate recovery business in London and also a cap. During the same period the number of falsely exaggerated insolvencies raised were also increased which is the subject of a separate investigation. It should also be noted that the Court of Appeal has held that a receiver does not have to postpone a sale in order to obtain a better price. In straightforward cases involving residential property occupied by the borrower, the bank is more likely to repossess and use its power of sale. However, in the context of investment property, a bank will often not want to take on the risk and cost of day-to-day -day management of the property, in which case an LPA receivership is seen as a quick and effective solution. If a lender is unable to recoup all its losses through an LPA receivership, the next stage may well be to wind up or bankrupt the borrower. This is rarely the bank's preferred choice and the poor press created by such back to the 1990s actions is generally seen as bad for everyone. So the LPA receivership is the easy option. Both were initiated by banks, building societies and mortgage lenders trying to clean their books. Both involved attempts to gain possession and then sell on the values to associated companies and agents of unrealistic terms to increase the lender's profits. I want to bring to your attention one particular case where the mortgage works appointed an LPA receiver. The company called Touchstone Limited who are heavily involved in such deals even though the owners, Mr. and Mrs. Slim, were never in reality in arrears. Any alleged arrears were improperly if not illegally applied by TMW as was later accepted by District Judge Taylor. The most common tactic in these cases is for the lender to threaten expensive and protracted legal battles that for the borrower would only worsen the situation. In addition unfortunately the District Judge in the case of Mr. and Mrs. Slim died before the case was concluded. Up until this stage TMW had denied all charges but the outcome of an independent expert review directed by the late district judge Taylor confirmed every point in favor of Mr. and Mrs. Slim and it was clear that TMW had lost the case that they had dragged out for five years. So TMW offered either take it from Lim order as an agreement or expect further protracted negotiations. During the proceedings Mr. Slim had suffered a serious heart attack brought on by the stress of the illegal actions of TMW and was financially reduced by the costs of these proceedings. Having had to live with the constant threat of the loss of the property for the last five years at least the Tim Lin order would prevent that from happening and reduce the legal costs so under duress they accepted. TMW for the first time accepted the errors of their ways and the findings of the single joint expert previously appointed and then agreed to correct the appalling overcharges on the account, reinstate the correct interest rates and remove £83,000 plus legal charges from the mortgage capital to what it should have been. But TMW refused to offer any compensation and not to pay any of Mr. and Mrs. Slim's costs. Remember they had never been in arrears. So Mr. and Mrs. Slim took the matter to the FOS whose first report was totally negative and totally misinterpreted the claim of Mr. and Mrs. Slim even though the financial ombudsman service had the entire documents before them. It seems that the FOS handling of the whole matter needs to be now investigated by the Financial Services Authority since the FOS is so toothless. Our conclusions are that the Mortgage Works UK PLC was wrong to firstly appoint the LPA receiver in the first place because there were no arrears. And secondly wrong to try to repossess our house which was never in arrears. 
The Mortgage Works UK PLC was also wrong to deny the original evidence for over five years until forced to accept the single joint experts review confirming no arrears of any time. Again, the Mortgage Works UK PLC was also wrong to use unscrupulous solicitors to beat down Mr. and Mrs. Slim's ability to fight a just cause resulting in a heart attack. Again, the Mortgage Works UK PLC was also wrong to put excess financial pressure on Mr. and Mrs. Slim causing great stress and difficulty and also try to avoid compensation by use of the Tomlin in order to prevent a final court decision. Finally, the Mortgage Works UK PLC was also wrong to fail to quickly and clearly inform the credit agencies that the TMW were wholly at fault in creating bad debts on Mr. and Mrs. Slim's accounts. It is our conclusion that the Mortgage Works threw excess money into the case merely to delay the case and in their refusal to accept guilt. The FOS claimed to have read the documents. Yet they draw the conclusion that the Mortgage Works UK PLC acted correctly in trying to seize the house in credit not arrears and treat the vulnerable owners despicably. Is this justice?